On the east bank of the River Derwent, in the Derbyshire Dales, stands the grand stately home Chatsworth House. It is the seat of the Duke of Devonshire and has belonged to the Cavendish family since 1549. The name Chatsworth is a corruption of Cheetlesworth, meaning the court of Cheetle. In the reign of Edward the Confessor, a man of Norse origin named Cheetle held lands jointly with a Saxon named Leonnoff in three townships. Cheetle was deposed after the Norman conquest and in the Doomsday Book of 1086 the manor of Cheetle's Nord is listed as a property of the crown in the custody of William de Peverell. Chatsworth ceased to be a large estate until the 15th century when it was acquired by the Leach family who owned property nearby. They enclosed the first park at Chatsworth and built a house on the high ground in what is now the southeastern part of the garden. In 1549 they sold all their property in the area to Sir William Cavendish, treasurer of the King's Chamber and the husband of Bess of Hardwick, who had persuaded him to sell his property in Suffolk and settle in her native county. Bess began to build the new house in 1553. She selected a site near the river which was drained by digging a series of reservoirs which doubled as fish ponds. Bess finished the house in the 1560s and lived there with her fourth husband George Talbot, the sixth Earl of Shrewsbury. In 1568 Shrewsbury was entrusted with the custody of Mary Queen of Scots and brought his prisoner to Chatsworth several times from 1570 onwards. Bess died in 1608 and Chatsworth was passed to her eldest son Henry. The estate was then purchased from Henry by his brother William Cavendish, the first Earl of Devonshire, for £10,000. Few changes were made at Chatsworth until the mid 17th century. William Cavendish, the third Earl of Devonshire, was a staunch royalist, expelled from the House of Lords in 1642. He left England for the safety of the continent and his estates were seized by Parliament. Chatsworth was occupied by both sides during the Civil War and the third Earl did not return to the house until the restoration of the monarchy. He reconstructed the principal rooms to make them more comfortable, but the Elizabethan house was outdated and unsafe. William Cavendish, the fourth Earl of Devonshire, who became the first Duke in 1694 for helping to put William of Orange on the English throne, was an advanced Whig. He was forced to retire to Chatsworth during the reign of King James II. This called for rebuilding the house, which began in 1687. Cavendish aimed initially to reconstruct only the south wing with the state apartments and so decided to retain the Elizabethan courtyard plan, although its layout was becoming increasingly unfashionable. He enjoyed building and reconstructed the east front, which included the painted hall and long gallery followed by the West Front from 1699 to 1702. The North Front was completed in 1707, just before he died. The first Duke also had large gardens designed by George London and Henry Wise, who was later appointed by Queen Anne as Royal Gardener at Kensington Palace. William Cavendish, the second Duke of Devonshire, and William Cavendish, the third Duke of Devonshire, made no changes to the house or gardens, but both contributed much to the collection found at Chatsworth at the time. The fourth Duke made great changes to the house and gardens. He decided that the approach of the house should be from the west. He had the old stables and offices, as well as parts of Edensor village pulled down, so they were not visible from the house and replaced the first duke's formal gardens with a more natural look, designed by Capability Brown, which he helped bring into fashion. The house has been altered in the 18th and 19th centuries, and from 2011 to 2012 
it underwent a £14 million restoration. The owner is the Chatsworth House Trust, an independent charitable foundation formed in 1981 on behalf of the Cavendish family. The chapel was built between 1688 and 1693, a year before the fourth Earl was created the first Duke of Devonshire. It has remained almost completely unaltered ever since. Occupying the same location as the Elizabethan Chapel, this double height space stands directly beneath the state bedchamber and closet above. Rising from the first to the second floor is one of the earliest examples of a cantilevered staircase in England, which attracted comments for its ingenuity of its construction almost as soon as it was completed in 1691. The six dukes set about converting the rooms in this part of the house into new convenient and fashionable bedrooms for his guests in 1830. Previously the rooms had been in the style like those in the state apartment, but to a lesser quality and lacking painted ceilings. Two of the rooms are known together as the Scots apartment, another is named the Leicester bedroom. The names come from Mary Queen of Scots who sometimes stayed at Chatsworth during her imprisonment, and Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, favourite of Queen Elizabeth I, who visited as a guest of Bess of Hardwick and her fourth husband, the sixth Earl of Shrewsbury. The great chamber was completed in 1694 and was the principal room of the apartment where the court would have assembled to await the king and queen. It was sometimes used as a dining room by the first duke and may have contained a buffet furnished with fine silver and gilt plate. The carved limewood which decorates the panelling contains representations of dead game, fish and fowl another reference to the possible use of the room for eating. The state drawing room served as the first withdrawing room in the apartment into which select members of the court could retire from the great chamber. The state music room is formally called the second withdrawing room or the green velvet room. The changes made by the sixth duke in the 1820s caused it to become known as the state music room. He inserted the central door on the wall opposite the windows to connect the space to the new gallery behind, improving the communication around the second floor. The first duke spent more on furnishing the state bedchamber than in any other room in the house. The mirror which hangs between the windows was particularly expensive, mirror glass being very difficult to make in such a large sheet. The sixth duke added the oak staircase between 1818 and 1832 to connect the Brock House with the new North Wing. The walls are hung with family and royal portraits ranging from the 1st Duke to the 11th Duke. In 1815, the 6th Duke converted the long gallery into the library. He had inherited his mother's love of books and set about increasing the size of the collection. Today, there are over 17,000 books in the library.
The great dining room was used by the family whenever there were more than six people for dinner until the outbreak of World War II in 1939. The first dinner to have been held was for Princess Victoria and her mother, the Duchess of Kent, in 1832. Victoria was 13 years old and it was the first time she had dined formally in adult company. The sixth duke was so anxious that it should go without fault that he held a full cooked rehearsal the night before. At the time that the Sixth Duke was creating the Sculpture Gallery, between 1818 and 1834, the fashion for collecting ancient sculpture, which had dominated in the previous century, meant that very few specimens were available for him to buy. Instead, the Sixth Duke's passion for marble sculpture led him to form a collection of the early 19th century European sculpture, and it remains one of the most important in the world still in its original location. The garden at Chatsworth consists of over 40 hectares, that's 100 acres of diverse cultivation, the product of nearly 500 years of continual gardening on the site. Although many features and styles of gardening have been successfully replaced to make way for new fashions, the garden retains vestiges of earlier features and planting schemes. The rockery was built as a reminder of the Six Dukes' visit to the Alps during his grand tour of Europe. Work began in 1842 and the stone was brought from Dub Edge, north of Stan Wood. The largest construction, the Wellington Rock, is 14 metres high and has a waterfall running down it. There is a maze of paths threading around and beneath the rocks. The third duke built the greenhouse that overlooks the rose garden in 1748. Greenhouses were first developed in Holland at the start of the 17th century, taking their name from their original use to house tender greens or evergreens during the winter. They were also often referred to as orangies because these were used to grow oranges and lemon trees. Originally called the Bowling Green House, Flora's Temple was built between 1693 and 1695. Kip and Kniff's engraving shows it standing beside the bowling green to the southwest of the house. The temple was moved to its present site in 1750. The ring pond remains from the first duke's garden where the squirting willow tree once stood on an island in the centre. The current lead duck fountain was moved from a now filled in pond at the north side of the Cascade in the 1960s. One of the most popular features in the garden is the Cascade, which was designed by Grillet, a French hydraulics engineer. It took two years to construct and was completed in 1696. No sooner was it complete than the Duke was already contemplating enlarging it. Chatsworth House is breathtaking, though it is an expensive visit. At its cheapest, an adult ticket for the house and garden is £29, a child £8 plus £5 parking. Visiting the farmyard and playground will cost you more on top. If you want to see more videos like this, please leave a super thanks or like, subscribe and share this video out there.